of our country, the effects of global warming have been subtle and so far no major harm. And we've talked about this. How often have you heard someone say on a beautiful night like this, if this is global warming, then bring it on. While the average global temperature has increased only one degree, the temperature above the Arctic Circle has increased 12 degrees. Tonight in Project Energy, a rare trip to the Arctic. I joined Will Steger and his expedition in a town called Clyde River on Baffin Island. It's a place where global warming threatens not only the polar bear, but the people who live there. Above the Arctic Circle, it is at once one of the most forbidding and beautiful places on Earth. But the frozen silence of this land of ice and snow can be warmed by the laughter of Inuit children. What's your name? <laughs> My journey finds immediate evidence of global warming when I point the camera out the airplane window. The ice here should be frozen solid this time of year. The breakup and melt is coming earlier and earlier to Baffin Island and the people who make their life on this ice. We've joined up with Will Steger's Global Warming 101 expedition. The effects of climate change have already altered part of Steger's route. We were going across what's called the Cumberland Sound, 50 miles across, 150 miles long. Normally you just go right across to get to the village of Pingerton, but that entire area was opened up this year, just totally broke up in, in January. And there's a lot less snow than I remember from my previous trips north. Glaciers once covered these now exposed mountain faces. But the real story could be told better by the Inuit people who have been living global warming for the past 20 years. Ice condition is so not stable anymore. This is Simon Kamenak. He hunts for his community. Are you mad at the people in the south for what's happened up here? Well, some ways not too much though, but um, uh, we can't help it. This is ground zero for global warming. The Inuit culture is totally changing. They're going to adapt to this, but they have no voice. And we want to give these people a voice. But I think more than that, we need to hear that global warming is affecting culture, it's affecting people. Steger has invited some high-powered help. Ed Viesters has summited the world's 14 highest mountains six times to the top of Everest. We read about global warming. We're not as affected by it yet. Uh, so I don't think we take it seriously, or a lot of people don't. Um, but if we can show that there are people living this right now, they are living the changes and it is affecting their lives. The team is headquartered in an unremarkable house on an inlet to the Arctic Ocean called Clyde River. It's a busy place. Sleds to be packed, routes planned, and in the corner, one of the world's most famous and richest men, Sir Richard Branson. Sir Richard has offered $25 million to anyone who can find a solution to the buildup of atmospheric CO2, one of the causes of global warming. They can see how much thinner the ice is getting, they're losing, you know, um, fellow, fellow elders through the ice. The night before the teams head off to cross the fifth largest island on Earth, the Inuit of Clyde River gather in the community hall for a feast. Caribou meat and Arctic char is spread out on tarps brought in by hunters to share. And they gather to thank Steger, his team, and Sir Richard Branson. <laughs> the mayor says how much it means to his people that their story is being told to the world. Some people predict that the Arctic has not got that many more years, and uh, and you know, look at the beauty of it. It would be too sad for words to see it disappear. Ironically, you know what the people up here say: we will adapt, but can the people of the South adapt to this? The South is us, and global warming seems like only a distant threat. For Steger, the stakes are higher, and the danger already here, especially for these people. If it gets worse, what's going to happen to the Inuit? I don't know. That's a good question, but uh, maybe we might have to stop traveling on winter time. <laughs> there is no such false distinction as them and us for Will Steger. For him, it is we. <laughs> but how long before these children no longer warm the Arctic with their laughter? <laughs> Steger's group plans to finish their expedition next week in the town of the Gulick. I'd like to thank Jerry Stanger for helping us photograph this mission. He's been Will's go-to guy for years. And he sacrificed time with his one-year-old boy and his wife, Janine, to record this expedition. From us, Jerry, thanks.